Hello and welcome back to the channel. We'll be doing a video by Mr. Beat. I haven't checked him out on the channel before, but personally, I do like his videos and they tend to be factually correct. And this is every president's biggest accomplishment in his opinion. Now, I have very strong views on a lot of presidents. Um, and yeah, you'll probably disagree on my some of my views, especially the fact that FDR is my second favorite president of all time, and uh, Teddy Roosevelt is my favorite. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt is my favorite president, so I like the Roosevelt. I'm Mr. Beat. At this point, I've managed to accomplish making a lot of videos about all the American presidents. I've made videos about their pets, their kids, their wealth, their religion, their education, even their favorite food and music. Yeah. But one thing I haven't accomplished yet is just straight up looking at their accomplishments. What did they get done while in office that had the greatest impact? Now, this was six months ago, so... Biden should be on here. Well, in this video, we are going to look at the biggest accomplishment of every American president while they were in office. But first, here's a word from our sponsor. What is it? In fact, you see, it's about the biggest accomplishment of every American president while they were in office. But what does biggest accomplishment mean? Well, it basically just means the one thing they did while they were in office that had the greatest positive impact on the... So just like for me, I would say growing the economy for FDR, uh, actually fixing the economy, and or winning the World War, they would be his two biggest accomplishments. And yeah. Greatest number of people. And when I say, quote, greatest positive impact on the greatest number of people, I say it with my historian hat on, looking at all of American history. Yes. Now, it has to be something they accomplished while in office, so sorry, William Henry Harrison. Jeez, what am I going to say for William Henry Harrison? And um, what about George Washington? He didn't create the country while in office. Bruh. Oh, yeah? Yeah! And what are you going to say about Andrew Johnson? Oh, yes. hey, Mr. Terry. Honestly, I love his Mr. Terry uh, channel. Honestly, like to subscribe to him. He is brilliant. He basically is me, but a history teacher. Oh, uh, what was that? <clears throat> oh, hey, Mr. Beat. Sorry, I thought you knew I was watching you. So what are you going to say about Andrew Johnson? Oh, jeez. What am I going to say for Andrew Johnson? Oh, uh, well, you'll all just have to find out. What are you going to say for Donald Trump? Okay. <laughs> well, feel free to jump in if you disagree with me on any of these, okay? Are you sure? I kind of feel bad for interrupting you already. Oh, don't feel bad. I only peed my pants a little bit. Seriously, though, my... This bit's mildly stupid, so I'm just going to skip it. ...accomplishment for every American president in history while they were in office... In my opinion. And in my opinion, too. Yes, of course, in our opinion. Curtain, please. Curtain. George Washington. The greatest accomplishment of Washington was making it clear what the role of the president was. Okay, I guess, I guess, but if we went... When he was in office, I guess you could say create the country with a bit of help. But yeah, I would say that is also one of his greatest achievements and definitely needs to be celebrated. Sure, the U.S. Constitution laid it all out, but you know how people can interpret that differently and stuff. Washington made it clear that he, as president, was not only the head of state, but also the commander-in-chief in charge of all the armed forces. Not just the armed forces, in fact. He was also in charge of all of the executive branch. He was basically in charge of everything. Additionally, while he couldn't pass new laws, he certainly influenced Congress into passing new laws as well as vetoing two he didn't like. Washington also made sure the president, as head of state, was the lead spokesperson for the entire country. Yeah. Even more specifically, though, the greatest thing that he did while in office was quit. Yes. Yep. He served one term, and he quit because he didn't want it to basically turn into a monarchy. 
He made it clear that he didn't want to be a king. And he voluntarily resigns or retired at the end of the second term. No, and thus set a standard for all future American presidents who came after him. Uh, FDR, FDR, he said four terms. John Adams. Although there's a strong case to make that appointing John Marshall to the Supreme Court was the most impactful, yeah. positive thing Adams did while president, I'm actually going to go with the Convention of 1800 yes. instead, which ended the quasi well. war and healed relations between the United States and France. In fact, without John Adams' biggest accomplishment, Thomas Jefferson's biggest accomplishment wouldn't even. Therefore, he has affected every president after him, almost. Exist! Thomas Jefferson. You probably already guessed this one, but yeah. Jefferson's biggest accomplishment was the Louisiana Purchase. Yeah, you know, he bought a large chunk of the modern U.S. so that he could use it, and so that he could do stuff as unconstitutional as it maybe was for just 15 million dollars jefferson was able to nearly double the size of the country and dramatically increased the country's power over and increased relations with france who then used that money to go to all of britain the continent while it had a positive impact long term for many americans it is also important to recognize that it came at a great cost. The lives of the indigenous people that were killed to get the land? For tens of thousands of Native Americans. Yep. James Madison. Madison's significance to the United States is much greater as a founding father. And also understated sometimes. But as president, he honestly didn't have that many accomplishments. Still, holding Great Britain back during the War of 1812 easily is his biggest accomplishment, oh, yeah. in my opinion. In, now, so, now what I've heard is Americans are taught that the War of 1812 was a victory for them. Now, what historians usually think is that what we think is that, that it wasn't, and that it was more of a stalemate and more that it was a draw you know pe and apparently they always overlook the fact that we burnt down the white house opinion the americans were huge underdogs in that war and surviving the british threat indeed felt like a second war of independence and led to sweeping patriotism and unity across the country whoa 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 uh, what about James Madison being the chief author of the Constitution? That's would, gotta be I would like to say that, but he wasn't technically in power at that point. Or something. Well, that was way before he was president. Also, being the shortest president ever at five foot four. Yes. That's an accomplishment? Yeah. Yeah, he was short. That was his smallest accomplishment. Brunch. James Monroe. Well, Monroe did sign the Missouri Compromise, yeah. which held the country together despite its differences over slavery for the next 30 years. But I think Monroe's biggest accomplishment was no law he signed, but just a bunch of words he said. The Monroe died. No, I personally prefer the Missouri Compromise because it kept the country from going to war early and it stopped them from actually going to war when they weren't ready for it. Doctrine, baby. The Monroe Doctrine was basically a set of foreign policy principles that said that any intervention in the political affairs of the Americas for foreign powers, okay, mostly Europe, would be seen as a hostile act. In yes. other words, you mess with me and my neighbors to the south, we will come after you, my friend. Most historians say the Monroe Doctrine is a defining moment in the history of American foreign policy, and it would heavily... It is, it's... Still, it's heavily influential, but, you know, the country could have been destroyed if it wasn't for the Missouri Compromise. Influenced the foreign policy of many presidents who came after him. So his greatest achievement is intimidating foreign countries. How American. How American indeed. John Quincy Adams. Ah, yeah. Infrastructure, FTW. Adams was greatly influential through his ambitious infrastructure. Yes, he was, but I still don't think it was his greatest achievement. 
he didn't really do much when president that would count as a great achievement though projects to keep the country connected in particular presiding over big repairs and further construction on the national road and the creation of a bunch of new and the national road is definitely what he, his greatest achievement alone um it connected all part it connected parts of the US which wouldn't have been connected before and actually helped the economy grow at such a young in such a young country. Canals. Andrew Jackson. Jackson is the only president in American history to pay off the national debt. Yes. When he first took office, the national debt was $58 million. Six years later, he was able to limit the spending of Congress so much that it was down to zero. And there was a surplus. So what did Jackson do with all the extra money that came in? Well, he divided it evenly between the states, of course. Communist. Yeah, he, uh, people now envision him as a communist. But no, he actually tried to better the country by doing that. Martin Van Buren. Van Buren helped in the Aroostook War between settlers of Maine and New Brunswick. Bet yes. you didn't know that, did you? But... It's understated and actually could have stopped a war again. Uh -huh. And those mutton shops. <laughs> mm hmm. William Henry Harrison. Oh, geez. Here it is. Uh um, he didn't really serve for that long. I think he died not long after. I think he died like three months into his term. Oh, uh, well. His biggest accomplishment as president for those 31 days was his great inauguration speech. The one in which... The one where he didn't wear a coat and probably is the reason why he died. Which he famously wore no coat and spoke longer than any other president at their inauguration in history? Oh, I know! Appointing Daniel Webster as Secretary of State. Yeah, that's probably his biggest achievement, but we can kind of gloss over... Um, Harrison. That was an excellent choice. Woo! John Tyler. I would say Tyler's biggest accomplishment was the annexation of Texas. Yes. He was a big reason why Texas joined the United States. And remember, it was an independent country at the time. It did so. A shout out to Tyler, Texas, by the way, a city named to honor him. And yeah, so these memes about um texas becoming his um its own country it was true it was its own country not for it was about 40 years as well james polk while i don't entirely approve of how he did it over i don't like Polk's polk. biggest accomplishment was acquiring more territory for the united states yes. than any other presidents in history kind of a big deal first through carrying out the annexation of texas next through aggressively getting the united states involved in a war with mexico and promptly winning but losing a lot of men and not doing it very well. I've got the country all of this out here and finally negotiating a treaty with Great Britain to secure Oregon territory. Yes. See the shining sea indeed. Polk was also the subject of They Might Be Giants' most underappreciated song. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I wrote a song about, about Polk too, you know. Uh, I wrote a song about all the presidents. Zachary Taylor. I would argue that Taylor's biggest accomplishment was making sure California would be admitted to the Union as a free state. Although... Yeah, he very much tried, and even though there was a lot of opposition, he managed to somehow. And, you know, Tyler is always forgotten. And he actually managed to very well, and kind of... It, it, yes, it kind of did drift the country apart a little bit, but it also kind of brought it together a small amount. He was a slave owner himself. He was against the expansion of slavery out west. And as more and more Southerners threatened to leave the Union over the issue of slavery, he increasingly sided with the anti-slavery Northerners during his presidency. Because of him, California skipped over becoming a federal territory because he knew otherwise Congress would just endlessly fight about whether or not slavery yes. should be legal there. Millard Fillmore. 
Fillmore and his Secretary of State, Daniel Webster, organized and sent out the Perry Expedition, which opened relations between Japan and the outside world. The yeah, so Japan at this time was kind of locked off from the rest of the world, and the US kind of just went trade with me, and they just had to. Expedition ultimately led to an end to Japan relations with Japan and most of Europe. Franklin Pierce. How about the Gadsden Purchase? Why haven't you done any jokes about the Gadsden Purchase? Pierce arranged for it to be bought from Mexico for a fairly cheap price, and it provided a great strip of land to build a transcontinental railroad. Yeah, transcontinental railroad, and kind of helps the economy a little bit more with that. While also resolving border disputes that had been ongoing. You gotta be able to laugh at the Gadsden Purchase. I mean, that's <laughs> what life's all about. Maybe that's what your life's about, but I don't, I don't see what's so funny about a 150-year-old land treaty. Well, just look at all the comedic possibilities. I mean, you got Franklin Pierce. Hello. James Gadsden. <laughs> Not to mention topographical issues regarding the construction of the Transcontinental yes. Railroad. I mean, the jokes practically write themselves. <laughs> Today, 1.8 million Americans live in that area, and it remains an important part of the country. Although I must give a shout out to Pierce for aggressively lowering tariffs, and thus lowering the cost of doing business and making... And thus, increasing the economy. ...stuff cheaper for consumers. James Buchanan. There weren't oh, I hate Buchanan. many accomplishments, but I think Buchanan's biggest was establishing more federal control over Utah territory in what became known as the Utah War. I still think Brigham Young was the worst governor in American history, and it was ultimately a good thing that Buchanan got him out of there. Buchanan kind of also didn't help the Civil War, which would come next. And Buchanan was the only president not to be married. That's got to be an accomplishment, right? That's definitely an accomplishment. It's Buchanan, of course he wasn't married. I love Mrs. B. Abraham Lincoln. Uh, keeping the country together? Hello? In addition to preserving... I... I do have one say thing about him. Uh, the Emancipation Proclamation said that slave, that eight slaves in uh, African Americans were still not as good as white people. That's what I have to say about him. And that's why he's only four on my list. The Union with his leadership during the Civil War, I'd say Lincoln's biggest accomplishment was ending slavery. First, with his Emancipation Proclamation, and second, with everything he was able to do behind the scenes to get the 13th Amendment passed, yes. as seen in the wonderful film named The 13th Amendment. Uh, or I mean, Lincoln. Hey, Lincoln also accomplished being the tallest president at six foot four. Yes. <laughs> Without the hat, even. Oh, and he's in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Fun fact. Yes, yeah, it's weird. Andrew Johnson. Again, not many accomplishments during Johnson's presidency either. But I suppose give him credit for the purchase of Alaska. Like, so, the purchase of Alaska is interesting. So, the Russians didn't want it because it wasn't making them any money. So they sold it for two cents an acre. Imagine how little money that is, first of all. Two cents an acre. Right. Go forward about 50 years, they find gold and oil. And now, the Alaskan Territory is making the most money of any uh, state, any other state. That is how good that purchase was. From Russia, in my opinion, it was another great bargain that benefited the United States long term. Ulysses Grant. Uh, Grant yes. actually had quite a bit of accomplishments he while did. he was president. But I say his efforts to help African Americans remain at the top. His push for the passing of the 15th Amendment. His signing of the Civil Rights Act of 1875. And his success hunting down and prosecuting members of the KKK during Reconstruction. And actually, 
um, he cracked down on government people being KKK members. Kim, one of the strongest allies of African Americans during the 1800s, Rutherford Hayes. Hayes' biggest accomplishment was getting the ball rolling with civil service reform. Instead of giving federal jobs to his political supporters, he had a policy of giving them jobs based on whether or not they were, wait for it now, qualified. Yes. And when Congress was slow to act... And at the time, no one was qualified on civil service reform, Hayes issued an executive order that prohibited federal office holders from having to make campaign contributions or being politically active in order to work in the federal government. James Garfield. Uh, he was only in office for a few months, but still, he took what Hayes did with civil service reform and cranked it up to 11. Even though it became a law after his assassination, I'd argue the Pendleton Civil Service yes. Reform Act was mostly which, because of him. Which is what he was trying to get before done before he was assassinated, but just didn't get the chance. Chester Arthur. Arthur is a big reason why the United States Navy became a lot stronger. Since the Civil War, American naval power had dramatically declined. But Arthur almost single-handedly reversed that trend. Grover Cleveland. I think Cleveland's biggest accomplishment was related to not what he did do, but what he didn't do. Yes. He weakened the power of the presidency. I think that's a good thing. Time and... No, he just didn't do anything. He just sat there and let the economy grow. Kind of like what Hoover did, except when Hoover was president, um, everything went wrong. Time again throughout his presidency, when many called for him to act, he essentially responded by saying the Constitution didn't allow him to do so. As commander-in-chief, when imperialists wanted him to take over Hawaii yes. and Cuba, he resisted. I think this constraint is noble, and you just don't see it with very many American presidents. Benjamin Harrison. Hands down, Harrison's biggest accomplishment was signing the Sherman Antitrust yes. Act, which was the first big law to fight trusts, monopolies, and cartels in order to increase economic competitiveness. William McKinley. Many don't realize this, but McKinley set the stage for the Panama Canal existing. He was very hands-on in the planning process. Yeah, well, the U.S. kind of forced Panama to create the canal. So, I guess that's not too big of an achievement, but then the actual construction and why it was done kind of was. So, it depends on what side of the V you're looking at. Even though it wouldn't be completed until 13 years after his death. Theodore Roosevelt. There were My so many big accomplishments during Teddy's presidency, but I'll go with his influence and signing of both the Federal Meat Inspection Act and the Pure Food and Drug Act. So, first of all, the Federal Meat Inspection Act is actually uh, FDR used uh, where in his New Deal. So, it, um, a, com a chicken company was selling off chickens for human consumption and the federal uh, government that was controlled uh, the supreme court who at the time was controlled by republicans didn't want to do anything and found them not guilty of violating it so what he did is he brought in his own uh people judges six judges to try and do it which people found unconstitutional but it was because of that act that was done that it was done and the pure food and drug act is kind of what led to the food and drug administration Heather. i also love his national parks honestly it really helped the country those laws have been extremely influential protecting us as consumers he rode a moose yes he did. that he did 
William Taft. While Roosevelt is known as the trust buster president, Taft nearly doubled the number of antitrust lawsuits of Roosevelt. And he did that in just one term. Also, a shout out to his dollar diplomacy foreign policy, which sought to expand American influence overseas, not through military force, but through economic incentives. He was so fat, he got stuck in a bathtub. Yes, he did. Poor William Howard Taft, always with the memes with the bathtub. Woodrow Wilson. I'm a my, the worst president of all time, in my opinion. A big fan of... A racist idiot who said the birth of a nation was the best film ever and was completely true. Wilson's 14 points. A list of principles he created to influence peace negotiations at the end of World War One. They promoted stuff like free trade, open agreements, democracy around the world, and something known as self-determination, which means people around the world ought to determine who rules over them. Basically, Wilson promoting self-determination was him him strongly rejecting imperialism even though some- it was just him trying to make everywhere the u.s version of that country some folks laughed at wilson's 14 points at the time calling them to quote idealistic today they are mainstream ideals which ultimately are a big reason why the united nations exists all right all right Real talk here. Woodrow Wilson's 14 points were a very good set of ideas. And if more of them had actually gone into the Treaty of Versailles, maybe no World War II. Mm. Warren Harding. Harding signed the Budget and Accounting Act of 1921, which created the country's first formal budgeting process. It also created a lot of economic wealth for the country. And put the president in charge of budget planning. I'm sorry, Harding. That was kind of boring for you. (laughs) Calvin Coolidge. I think Coolidge's biggest accomplishment was signing the Indian Citizenship Act, which recognized that any person born in the United States was a citizen. It was passed after, for years, courts had not recognized Native Americans as citizens and therefore not protected by the U.S. Constitution. Herbert. And therefore could oh Hoover, and therefore anything could happen. Now for Hoover, I never liked Hoover, but I think his biggest accomplishment was building the economy by doing nothing. Herbert Hoover, I just don't know. Hoover's not giving me much to work with. Okay, uh, I guess the three Supreme Court justices he nominated: Charles Evans, Hughes, Owen Roberts, and Benjamin I Cardozo. Guess, but... eh, they were all pretty good. So kudos to that. Franklin Roosevelt. Obviously, FDR had so... The New Deal, the winning of World War II, the fact that he managed to keep relationships between the North and the South on uh, black people, and the fact that he tried to do stuff to help black people when that is forgotten sometimes, and the fact that without him, the Great Depression would have lasted much longer many big accomplishments so it is really difficult for me to pick just one but i guess i'll go with his signing of the social security Uh, act which created the social security program that so many americans seem to take for granted today over time it has led to a dramatic decline in poverty among the elderly overall you can't deny his effective leadership during the great depression and world war ii he really did help us get through some dark times FDR's New Deal definitely changed Americans' relationship with their government. Yeah. Really, before that, people didn't really expect aid from their government. But ever since the New Deal, people have come to expect it. Harry Truman. Ah, oh, Truman. The Marshall Plan, for real. Yes. The Truman and- Honestly, the Marshall, the Marshall Plan helped Western Europe to actually become back to where they were after World War Two, and actually meant that they could get back on track. And without it, a lot of the inventions we take for granted today probably wouldn't exist, because a lot of these inventions that we do take for granted today are, were invented in Western Europe. Administration transferred more than $115 billion in today's money to European countries devastated by World War II. Its goals were not only to rebuild war-torn regions, but But also to basically go to the USR, look, we have all this money and you don't. 
also to remove trade barriers, modernize industry, restore European prosperity, and prevent the spread of communism. And I'd argue it was one of the most effective programs ever implemented by the United States government in history. Here's something to think about. The Marshall Plan really helped economically rebuild Germany and Japan. Now, if the Marshall Plan hadn't taken place, would we have had a World War III? Possibly. Dwight Eisenhower. Dwight I think Eisenhower. Eisenhower's biggest accomplishment was his massive role in the creation of the interstate highway system. Yeah, um, actually it was also FDR created the foundations for it, uh, being, um, being influenced by Hitler. Um, but Eisenhower definitely took it to the next level and meant that interstate travel was now much easier and even inter-country travel was much easier. I got a whole video here about the interstate highway system. If you want to learn more, you can watch it later, but stick around. We have more presidents to learn about here. What, what? You Not didn't know there were more. other presidents after Eisenhower? Didn't your mother ever tell you about the other presidents after Eisenhower? John F. Kennedy. Oh, God. Well, you could say avoiding World War III with his handling of the Cuban Missile Crisis, but I'll go with his civil rights efforts. Yeah. Before his death, JFK proposed a huge a civil rights bill. That ultimately be. But then, in my opinion, I think Lyndon B. Johnson that that should go to, and the uh, the ending of possibility of nuclear armageddon should be where his great biggest accomplishment is it came at. the civil rights act of 1964 oh and a shout out to the peace corps which jfk established it's a wonderful program that really helps so many people out lyndon johnson LBJ also got a lot done while he was president, especially with civil rights. But I'm going to go with him signing the Social Security Amendments of... No, I'm still thinking civil rights is probably his biggest step, in my opinion. 1965, which created both Medicare and Medicaid. Medicare is a health insurance program that provides cheap coverage for the elderly, while Medicare is a health insurance program that provides cheap coverage coverage for those with lower income. Both programs have helped tens of millions of Americans have access to quality health care who otherwise would not have access. Both programs have also led to health care innovation and increased medical standards. Richard Nixon. Nixon's policy of detente, or a more flexible policy of negotiation to ease relations. And meant that they could actually, um work together the USA and the Soviet Union and I think and him and Gorbachev got along very well with both the Soviet Union and China during the Cold War was brilliant I actually think it was the most effective thing any president had done up to that yes but also no in my opinion um yes they avoided um that and we created better trade deals, which meant the USSR economy could grow, and the SALT agreements meant that they could actually do well. And the first time a president had been to China as well was Nixon, where he went to a museum, actually. Point to set the stage for the Cold War coming to an end. Also, did you know that all the moon landings happened? When Nixon was in office? Yes. I always forget about that. Now, whether you like the way it ended or not, it is notable that America's involvement in Vietnam ended under Nixon. Yeah. True. Gerald Ford. How about the Privacy Act of 1974? Ford signed that. It's one of the few laws in American history that even attempts to protect the personal records of America. To be honest, I kind of think that is his greatest achievement. I don't know much about him. He's kind of glossed over in a lot of history textbooks and didn't really do much for foreign relations, just kind of did what Nixon did and piggybacked off Nixon. So, yeah, I kind of guess. ...from being exploited by the government. 
Jimmy Carter. I'd say the biggest accomplishment of Carter while he was president is something usually attributed to his successor, yeah. Ronald Reagan. The deregulation of several industries. With Carter signing of the Airline Deregulation Act, the Motor Carrier Act, the Staggers Rail Act, and the Depository Institution. Yeah, the people underappreciate that he actually did that. They often attribute it to Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Mr. Gorbachev tear down this wall. Reagan's biggest accomplishment was convincing the world that the Soviet Union was a failed state, and he indeed was a big influence. Even Gorbachev agreed with him at the point. That's how influential he was. On the fall of the Soviet Union. You can't deny that. His relationship with the Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, was particularly an instrumental part of this. George H.W. Bush. Although you could say the Gulf War was quite a smashing success as far as wars go, mm. I hate to say a war is his biggest accomplishment. So, I'll go with Bush's signing of the Americans with Disabilities Act. I do want to put down the Gulf War for one reason. He stopped further conflict. But then I guess that also kind of directly relates to... 9-11 uh, happened afterwards because of that, so I guess they could and couldn't have been. And plus, he was disabled later in life, so it actually really helped him, the Americans who have to say, Disabilities Act. 1990, which has led to dramatic improvements regarding access and accommodations to public services and facilities for those with disabilities. This is another law we greatly take for granted today. Bill Clinton. Well, Ooh. let's keep the laws we take for granted today theme going here with the Family and Medical Leave Act of 1993. I Bill Clinton signed that. Well, he did. It makes it so that employers have to provide employees with job-protected, unpaid leave for certain medical and family reasons. Yes. In other words, you can't get fired for taking time off to take care of your sick mother, for example. George W. Bush. As many mistakes as Bush Jr. made throughout his presidency, I've never denied that he was a good leader. He was. So his biggest accomplishment? Keeping the country united, determined, focused, and even hopeful after the horrific 9 11 attacks. Yeah, I think that was sure a great achievement. He compelled the country to carry on and to try and um, not get too overfought by it and not to increase racism to, because of it. Chaotic and divisive once he made the decision to invade Iraq. But before that, Bush's leadership regarding going after suspected terrorists around the world was phenomenal. Barack Obama. Obamacare. Obamacare. Definitely. Duh. Obama spearheaded and signed the law, named after him, but also known as the Affordable Care Act, which dramatically increased the amount of Americans who had health insurance. While the law was far from perfect, most Americans have appreciated it, since it has made it so that health insurance is more affordable to lower-income families and, and made possible. it so that health impossible to lower income families insurance must cover them regardless of pre-existing conditions i recently learned that there is some evidence that obamacare has actually helped reduce health care costs overall and Although, save lives the heritage foundation found the opposite to be true so i don't know the heritage foundation you love them don't you thanks obama donald trump Trump's biggest accomplishment was his signing of the First Step yeah, Act, kind one of, of the biggest criminal justice reform laws in American history. It reformed federal prisons and reversed harsh sentencing laws and basically- As bad as he was, he did do a couple good things. We just made it less likely for folks to go to federal prison for stupid stuff. Joe Biden. Well, he's only been in office for a year and a half at this point, but I'd say his biggest accomplishment, at least so far, is bringing the troops home from after. Yeah, that's his biggest achievement. I remember it happening. And honestly, it's good. You know, after 20 long years of fighting, it, they finally brought it to a close. Afghanistan. Now, how it went was obviously a disaster, but at least he had the courage to do it. 
Remember, though, it's extremely difficult to not be biased one way or the other regarding whoever the current president in office is. And I'm sure one day my opinion will change, of yeah. course. So there it is. There was the biggest account. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe. And like and subscribe to Mr. Terry History and subscribe to him. And Mr. B, he does some brilliant videos that are mostly factually true. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.